Now, health innovations must address effective health communication and access to service delivery. This is according to Dr. Kelechi Ohiri, Head Health Strategy at the Delivery Foundation. CNBC Africa's Onye Sunday caught up with him at the 2015 Health Innovation Challenge. We need several types of innovations. But when you look at the issues that affect the rural population in Nigeria, that should be the starting point. So the rural population in Nigeria tends to be poorer. They tend to be remotely located, so further away from healthcare facilities. So that means any sort of innovation needs to address the fundamental problems that affect them. One of those such problems are demand side problems. So things that pertain to financial access to healthcare, things that pertain to certain behaviors and levels of education that impact their ability to seek adequate health care. And then the second set of in things are supply side issues, which is innovations that are geared towards ensuring they have access to service delivery, so bringing those services to them. And so you find that most of the innovations that are needed pertain to those, getting information to people, helping improve financial access, but also making sure that those services are provided in a way that's responsive to their needs and in a way that is culturally appropriate to them. Now you've heard all sorts of ideas or rather innovations um, here today. Are you considering the sustainability um, of some of these technology to function in the rural areas, especially when you take into consideration the fact that these rural areas do not have the infrastructure needed to support the technology or innovation pitched? I think that's a very important question. I mean, we want to avoid a situation where you look for or you have a solution and then retroactively start looking for the problem that that solution can solve. So the key word there is appropriate technology. So there are all sorts of technology platforms out there, but what types of technology are actually appropriate for what we have here? We know, for instance, that I mean, we may decide to invest a lot of money in building internet infrastructure, etc. However, we know that the penetration of mobile technology in Nigeria is much higher. So it would make sense to build things that leverage such platforms like mobile platforms because you know almost everybody has, an, has a phone and can send an SMS, etc. And in doing so, um, that takes into consideration the particular infrastructure challenges that we have in Nigeria. So there is no point designing something state of the art that will not work in our context. So I think it's that keyword, it's appropriate technology mm -hmm. in a way that's user friendly, that even the most remote person who has very limited education can actually take advantage of. Now listen through some of the innovation that has been pitched so far. Most of them target um, health communication, especially in the rural areas. Now after these messages have been disseminated, what next? It's one thing to absorb the message. It's another thing to have access to health care um, for these women. Let's take, for example, a situation where you want to tackle malnutrition in the rural areas. So after they've heard the message on what they need to do and what they should not do, what happens? How do these women access health care? Now, granted, sending information and communicating to people is only one of many interventions that are needed to get people to actually change behavior and to actually access services. But it's a very important one in contributing to the overall package of interventions that are needed, particularly in the rural areas in Nigeria. In a lot of cases, you cite malnutrition as an example, just information on the right kinds of diet, on what to do when your child is having um, diarrhea, um, what to do when you notice that your child is actually malnourished or is not eating or feeding properly, what are the options, the local options you have. Even those things can save lives. It's not only when a child is really febrile and it's really looking very morbid that you actually have to take action, but what preventive interventions are needed. And most preventive interventions lend themselves to knowledge and education and knowledge is power. So you're empowering the household, you're empowering the woman in the rural community to actually take decisions and exert that agency that's needed for them to actually improve their welfare and the welfare of their children. I hear you when you say that, but you will agree with me that we're talking financial investment, or rather huge financial investments really needed in order to achieve what you've just um, um, listed. Uh, talking to the MD of Access Bank earlier, um, Mr. Herbert Wigwe, he did admit that the private sector, um, especially the financial institutions, still shy away from investing in the health sector. Uh, what's your take really on this and the need for them to, to come into the health sector and invest better? On one hand, it's unfortunate if they do share it from the health sector because when you look at other markets, you find out that the health sector is actually one of the 
key sectors in any economy. In the U.S., I mean, spend on healthcare accounts for roughly 17% of their GDP. And you find out the pharmaceutical industries were a major um, um, sector. And as a country goes through these um, economic transitions from low income to middle income, you find that healthcare spend, right, um, the growth in healthcare spend actually, you know, e exceeds that of the inflationary growth. So you expect that as more people move to middle class, they're going to spend a disproportionate portion of their income on healthcare and on health goods. And as Nigeria is going through its own demographic transition, and it's an epidemiological transition. People are spending a lot of money on healthcare, and that's why a lot of people travel out of the country and spend in hospitals in India, in the US, in the UK. Now, if you are an investor, one way to look at it is, well, how can I invest in healthcare in Nigeria to ensure that all these monies that are leaving the country actually spent in Nigeria? Now, there have been several issues that um, relate to the reasons why healthcare, there's an underinvestment in healthcare. And, and it's, a, it's a market failure related to access to finance. On one hand, you know, most investors, when you look for healthcare investments, don't really want understand the sector. And secondly, it's quite a fragmented sector, so they may not see what will justify the amount of money they'll spend doing the due diligence necessary to find good investments. On the other hand, you have the typical healthcare provider who is driven by a passion to save lives and they are extremely technical and may not necessarily speak the same business language that would appeal to investors and to those in the finance world. So it's almost as though in order to break this, what you call a low level equilibrium, you need a broker, someone who can speak to both sides and create an alignment. And that's the role an entity like the Private Sector Health Alliance plays. Dr. Kelechi Ohiri, Head Health Strategy at Delivery Foundation. And